A roll of drums heralds 1962. And our flag is raised. Uganda attains independence. A country with enormous resources and significant rural population. From the start, USAID focused on the country's potential as the breadbasket of East Africa. This was one year after President John F. Kennedy signed the U.S. foreign assistance legislation that mandated the creation of USAID. We wanted to demonstrate our alliance with these newly independent states, uh, and clearly Uganda was one of them. With a modest budget of $3.6 million, USAID invested its first 10 years in Uganda on agriculture and education. The agency set up extension services, supported research, and sponsored students to American universities to learn modern methods of farming. USAID's education program was founded in the belief that with significant political, social, and economic change, people needed to learn and grow. There was also a need to professionalize the education system to address the changes. Education, uh, health, and agriculture uh, are the benchmarks of our programs. Tororo Girls School, a reputed school that USAID built in 1963, modeled after the American approach to education. USAID broadened the curriculum and trained teachers. Former Minister of Education Gerardin Namirembebi Tamaziri was the first Ugandan headmistress at Tororo and a beneficiary of USAID training. That training was very useful because when we came back from America, we had internalized the objectives and practice of any diversified curriculum. USAID's commitment to innovation and knowledge sharing is strong even today. The agency is supporting the Ministry of Education to focus on special needs education by training teachers in novel techniques and ensuring children with disabilities study in the same classrooms with other pupils. All these who said supporting supported training programs, we make sure that we are not training for special schools. We are training for all schools. In 1971, following Idi Amin's military coup and the subsequent internal instability in Uganda, USAID suspended programs in the country. When USAID returned to Uganda in 1981, it found the country severely weakened with industries in disarray. The next six years was challenging for USAID because Uganda remained unstable. In 1986, President Yoweri Museveni ushered in an era of relative stability in Uganda. USAID transitioned from emergency relief to long-term development. Again, the focus was agriculture. USAID took advantage of the agricultural institutions and teamed up with Makere University to fund its research facility in Namulongi. The hybrid sunflower seed was one of the innovations in agriculture that was devised at this facility. We worked with uh, the National Agricultural Research Organization, uh, USID, and uh, we had a new variety, hybrid variety, released into the country. It is the month of July. Captura commercial farmers gather in a field to harvest maize. Under their umbrella organization, the farmers have received training in good farming practices from USAID. With the increase in production of maize, USAID stepped in to build a modern post-harvest handling facility. It is 90%, you say, 10% the contribution of the organization. It will dry, it will clean, it will sort, and it will be ready for market. The challenge now to the members is to produce. Majority of smallholder farmers in Uganda are women. Helen Elongat is a farmer in Lango, northern Uganda. She is the founder and executive director of Northeast Chile Producers Association, comprising small-scale women chili farmers. She has mobilized more than 340 groups of women from 10,000 households. This is a women's group, purely women's group, and they are doing this in order to economically empower them. With support from USAID projects, the association has set up 15 learning technology adaptation centers like this one for bananas and coffee in Lira. The innovation here is tapping the benefits of intercropping. So the technology here is we are really trying to, to increase the output and maximize 
the, the use of uh, the available land resource. To improve the post-harvest handling of chilies, USAID helped build six bulking centers. From the output so far, I have four graduates, my children, who are graduated, and they are now all working. Uganda diversified its exports from traditional coffee, cotton, and tea to non-traditional crops. The flower industry blossomed as USAID focused its attention to increase exports from this sector. The agency built a cold storage unit at Entebbe International Airport to allow flowers to remain fresh before they were flown out to Europe. USAID has actively engaged with young people to make their voices heard. By training and empowering them with new technology and tools, the agency is promoting a more participatory style of governance. The USA training has, has been very, very critical. Aspects of uh, you know, demanding for accountability, aspects of uh, allowing young people to participate in uh, the broad best uh, you know, governance system. At the peak of the HIV AIDS pandemic, USAID defunded programs focused on tasting, research, and database development, and later expanded these programs to include counseling and care. In 1987, the AIDS support organization TASO spearheaded the response to HIV AIDS by supporting people infected with the virus and raising awareness of the pandemic. USAID fully supported the organization. So the initial efforts of both the government of Uganda and all its development partners, including USAID, were to strengthen uh, prevention of HIV, care and support. USAID also bolstered the management capacity of TASO. This support has significantly contributed to TASO's recognition as a world-class model in the rest of Africa. USAID has developed us from a small uh, CBO into a big international organization. The vigorous campaign against HIV AIDS, combined with strong political will, helped to reduce HIV prevalence in Uganda, which reached 30% in the 90s to 6% today. Although AIDS still exacts a huge toll on Ugandans, a lot more people have access to free antiretroviral treatment. At Bobby Health Center 3 in Gulu, People living with HIV wait for their turn to receive life-extending drugs. Robert and Susan are among those enrolled at the clinic. This morning, they are here to receive their supply of drugs. Access to treatment has transformed their lives. My husband was above to die. After testing our CD4s, then they started giving us HRVs. Now our body is now developing. More women are receiving advice and medication that significantly reduce the risk of mother-to-child transmission of HIV. We have seen a drastic reduction in the children that are born positive. An integral part of USAID development efforts is research and technology to save lives. By establishing a laboratory at the Bobby Clinic, many Ugandans are able to get tested for malaria, TB, and HIV without having to travel long distances. We have helped health workers to uh, improve care, to be more exact in the type of uh, treatment they provide, and therefore there is less wastage of drugs. At the turn of the millennium, USAID's health programs included anti-malaria initiatives to reduce the risk of maternal and child mortality. At Mukono North Health Center 4 in central Uganda, distribution of mosquito bed nets to pregnant mothers is underway. USAID has distributed tens of thousands of insecticide-treated bed nets to its clients. Another anti-malaria initiative that has shown effective results is indoor residual spraying. USAID and the Ministry of Health are jointly conducting the spraying exercise with safe insecticides in highly malaria-prone congested communities. The innovative use of bicycles has helped USAID to reach more people in less time. Anje Betty lives in a local village, Gulu district, with her husband and eight children. Today, the team is in her village. Ever since they have sprayed, there's, there's few cases of malaria. I think it was only once. 
USAID was an early proponent of voluntary family planning and counseling women to exercise their reproductive rights. Kamuga Salongo is a member of the village health team in Kapeka sub-county, Nakaseke district. He received USAID training in community mobilization and proper delivery of family planning services. USAID njeva zanyu okusindika ataba basemesa abatu semesa okujate nafine tujja tusemesa abantu wafi. During the long war with rebels in northern Uganda from 1986 to 2007, more than 1.8 million people languished in 200 camps. USAID provided emergency assistance through Food for Peace and the Office of the U.S. Foreign Disaster Assistance amid difficult and dangerous conditions. Since 2007, all internally displaced people have returned to their homes and blended into their communities. For the war-affected children and unemployed youth, USAID has offered tools and training to gain better access to income-generating activities. Moving forward, USAID wants to create conditions where American assistance is no longer needed, replaced over time by efficient local governments, thriving civil societies, and vibrant economies. My life is a, a story to tell. I started way back 27 years ago. And I'm aware USAID has been in Uganda for the last 50 years. For my own life, it is 16 years. By then, I was staying in this house. And because of the trainings, the business I've been doing in my farm, I was able to transform my life. And I now moved to this one. All this I attribute to American government. We really thank them because if they were not there to train us, I don't think the level I am today I would be speaking here.